Hello everyone, this is Arrow, and welcome back to Sundown Muna Podfix. Today we will be reading part one of a two-part fic called Echoed by You by Straight as a Circles. Here's the summary. Yuzuku is quirkless, until he's not. Yuzuku should be ecstatic, really. He just wishes his quirk hadn't come in in the way that it did. Chapter one. Quirks are a funny thing. There's endless possibilities for a quirk. Some are strong and easy to identify at a glance, and some are less so. There's so many factors, and it's always been so interesting to Izuku. How did that really start? Why did it really start? Did humans' instincts detect some sort of future threat that humanity could, could have to prepare for one day? Is it psychological? Mental? Or had humans just gone so long without evolution that their bodies decided something needed to change? Yuzuku always wonders. The chances of getting answers is low, but it doesn't stop his mind from wandering to the unknown. He wishes he could know. What other kinds of quirks are out there? He's seen quirks based on things such as animals or objects. Do objects already have to be created or invented for someone to have a quirk based off of them? Is it created as a quirk? via knowledge from someone? Is it a person? If a person didn't know a specific object ex existed, could their child be born with a quirk based on that object? Or would it be com completely ruled out as a possibility because the child's body had nowhere to get the information from when developing? If you took a mutation quirk and surgically removed it and gave it to someone else, would they now possess that quirk? If Izuku asked Miriko, to donate her ears and other rabbit features to him, would he be able to control and use them efficiently, like they were his own, or would it rely on more than just that? Can quirks have tiny little factors that don't even seem noticeable in the long run until the person holds the quirk in until the person holding the quirk is presented with a situation where it specifically becomes obvious? Does anyone with a water manipulation quirk have a limitation that keeps them from specifically controlling one type of water, like water from one singular source in the world? Izuku can't stop himself from asking these questions. He's always so curious about quirks. He wants to pick them apart and find all their secrets. Alas, that's physically impossible. It's even harder considering that Izuku has no quirk of his own. And thus, his words are always dismissed as the crazy ramblings of a cre creepy, quirkless kid. Which is really mean, by the way. Just because he's quirkless, it doesn't mean he's stupid, right? He doesn't think so. His mom says he's pretty smart for his age, so he likes to think he at least somewhat understands what he's saying. He certainly enjoys it, so either way, he doesn't think it matters. He always has fun when thinking about quirks. Writing in his notebooks have become the highlights of his day. The phantom heat of a tiny compactic explosion presses against his skin, making Izuku flinch. A trembling hand briefly reaches up to scratch at the limp arm in an attempt to rid his skin of the feeling. His sight falls to the cracked sidewalk. He ambles upon curling. He ambles upon curls just narrowly poking his eye as he lets his head hang. It really doesn't matter if he enjoys it to others, though, does it? Memories of pages torn and sloppily taped back together make his eyes burn. Papers ripped from the spines of his precious notebook, forcing him to run home in tears and beg his mom to help him tie them back to the cover, or to have them ripped back out the next day, only to have them ripped back out the next day. The feeling of helplessness when he refuses to mention it to his mom, in fear of bothering her, instead opting to try and fix it himself. The despairing feeling of the notebook falling apart the next, the very next day without the help of his classmates. Stop. Izuku scrubs at his face, willing the heat behind his eyes to leave. No more tears. He needs to get out of this habit of crying so often. He cries at every little thing. It's... So stupid. It's stupid. Everything is stupid. School is stupid. Quirks are stupid. His teachers are stupid. Kachan is stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. He trips. Izuku feels it happen before he sees it happen. He kicks the back of his heel 
and goes toppling forward. His chin hits the concrete with a thud, and he keeps the coppery taste of blood filling his mouth, following quickly by the sharp sting that he knows is from accidentally biting his tongue. His palms scrape the pavement, leaving a burn that he knows will probably need to clean out and gets home when he gets home. He's so lucky that few people walk down the street. Izuku lets himself lie there for a few seconds. A few seconds become a few minutes, then a few more. When Izuku pushes himself up to be kneeling, he has to grasp his jaw and work out the tension that the sudden force had supplied. Repeatedly working it open and shut, he groans at the pain. Chewing is probably going to hurt for a little bit. He'll have to dig out those yogurts he knows his mom gets. There's a moment out of there's movement out of the corner of his eye, and Izuku quickly whips his head to the left to identify the possible threat. He feels the tension immediately leave his shoulders when he notices it's just a tall boy, most likely around Izuku's own age, walking on the opposite side of the street. His head full of wild purple hair is hanging low, shoulders hunched and hands pressed deep into his hoodie pockets. It's likely he was he hasn't even noticed Izuku. Izuku isn't sure if he's a if that's a good thing or not. Taking his attention off the boy, Izuku lifts his hands and tell and turns them over and assesses the damage. His skin his skin is an irritated pink, scraped and rough with blood noticeably ble beating up on his left hand in particular. He sighs, curling his hands into fists instead of averting his eye instead and averting his eyes ahead. He sees the boy crossing the street a bit ahead of him. He should really be looking up. Did he even look both ways? Most likely not. He would have noticed Izuku then, and seeing a 12-year-old kneeling on the sidewalk staring at their hands is definitely something to stare at. He should pay more attention when crossing the streets before he... A light glares at Izuku from the distance, rapidly approaching from down the street. A car. The world freezes behind Izuku. The car does not stop. Neither does Izuku. His throat strains as he hears himself yell. He doesn't know what he's saying, but it doesn't matter. The boy stops. Izuku screams. He turns and gives Izuku a wide-eyed look. The, conflu the confusion in his eyes fills Izuku with a deep dread. Izuku's legs burn with the pace he's forcing himself to suddenly endure without warning. He shouts. He screams. He cries. The car grows closer. The boy turns to see the rapidly approaching vehicle, and he must see that it's no sign of slowing or stopping. But he freezes. Izuku's eyes burn with tears as he jumps, his arms extended. He feels the force of the car whip past him, and the last thing Izuku clearly registers is the moment is the feeling of a thin figure held securely in his arms, the backs of his hands meeting the curb. Wow, he hasn't held anyone like that in a while. What? No, 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 that can't be true, right? He held his little sister all the time. What was he thinking? What's his sister name again? Oh, he's on the ground. Right, the car. His hands really hurt. He lifts the cur he lifts the limbs to check, turning them to see the faint scabs both of his palms and on the back. How'd he get those? He hit the curb and he tripped earlier because he was too stupid to pay attention. No, that's that's wrong too. When did he trip? He should probably get off the street. He doesn't want to risk getting hit by a car again. His legs are shaky and he stands, leaving the leaving the process slow as he scuffles to the sidewalk a few feet away. Wow, his legs feel long. Did he shrink? He's always been short. His dad had pow pouted when they measured his height at 5'6 at the beginning of the year. He trips and falls on his knees. He doesn't have a dad. Dad left years ago. He has two. He has, a, he has his mom. He has a little sister. What's happening? Holy shit! He didn't say that. The sudden feeling hits him like a brick. It hurts. His body feels like he's been torn in half. He can feel, he can feel his very innards being torn and pushed, and it aches inside him. His head pulses with a headache, feeling not unlike a jackhammer pounding in the inner side of his skull. He gasps when he suddenly finds himself falling backwards, his elbows harshly meeting the pavement on the sidewalk. Izuku winces at the feeling, another scrape most likely. 
He looks up and sees a pair of wide purple eyes. He momentarily wonders what just happened. What the fuck? But the company sums up how he feels how he feels pretty easily, it seems. The car. The sudden thought hits Izuku like a freight train. He quickly scrambles to sit up. Oh, oh my, are you okay? The boy clearly doesn't take the sudden movements very well, as he's already stumbling and fumbling to get to his feet to run in the opposite direction of Izuku, clear panic on his fa face. Wait! Izuku lunges forward and grabs the boy's elbows, and the two are sent creaning back towards the ground. The purplet's elbow juts out to what Izuku, to what Izuku assumes is an attempt to of self-defense and hits him in the throat. He grags and rolls the boy, rolls off the boy, holding his now sore neck. Oh, oh shit, I'm sorry. The boy squeaks, quickly kneeling his hands over Izuku's, hovering nervously over Izuku in a show of anxiety. I just... Izuku lifts a hand and hopes his hand gets the point of forgiveness across. If it does, the boy dirt certainly doesn't believe it as he quickly ruffles through his book bag, hanging over his side for something. He pulls out a water bottle and fusses to press the cool plastic against Izuku's neck. It doesn't do much, but Izuku appreciates the attempt to ignore the tears that are no doubt pouring down his face in lieu of sending the purple-haired boy a thumbs up. Sh shit I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. I just d didn't expect to almost get hit by a car, then whatever the that was and you just move so fast i the boy rambles tripping over his own words and flapping his hands in the space in front of him like it'll help explain his thoughts it it's fine izuku croaks back pushing himself up to brace himself on his arms specifically avoiding touching his elbows though his palms aren't doing much better he remembers hissing at the sudden forgotten sting that's multiplied he brings his hands back in front of him, flexing them carefully, before looking back up at the boy. I scared you after you nearly died. I'd be more concerned if you just just walked away. It's n nothing like nothing happened. Talking hurts, he realizes. Still, I, I shouldn't have just... Izuku doesn't let him finish, just huffs and gives him a look. The boy shuts his mouth with a soft click. They sit there in silence for a few moments. Izuku's head feels too full. It feels so busy, and he can feel the thoughts buzzing around him. But he can't pick one long enough to focus on it and dwell further. Everything that had just transpired had happened so fast, and he can't process it. The pain, the fear, the adrenaline. His legs still ache, he realizes. It all just went by so quickly. How's he supposed to... How's he supposed to pause and think about one thing when his mind still thinks it has to be ready and up to go if something else happens? So, Izuku looks at his company when hearing his voice. What was that? I assume you're talking about what happened right, right after. He doesn't even want to say it. The very thought of po and possibility that if he hadn't moved, if he'd been a second slower... This same boy would have been splattered on the street. All because that stupid fucking car hadn't stopped. Who was even driving that? He has, a, he has half a mind to go running down the street and find the asshole. Give him a what for this... Give him a what for this boy could have died had Izuku not been there. Wait, did he save someone? He... He did. He saved this boy. This boy would have been dead right now if it weren't for Izuku. Or maybe not dead, but he'd really be hurt. Izuku's never been hit by a car before, but he knows it's not exactly a pleasant experience. Yeah, right. He has to focus on that later. He has a boy who almost died here. Focus on this first. I, I don't have a mom, but I thought I did for a second. That's, that's never been a thing. I can't remember, and I've never had a da had a dad leave. I have a mom. Izuku admits, smiling lightly at the mere thought of her. I don't have two dads, though, or a sister. I never mentioned a sister, the boy squints, and I never mentioned my dad leaving. A silence falls on them, and Izuku shakily exhales, lowering the water bottle. 
He raises his arm and wipes the snot and tears from his face, feeling his face heat up by the fact that he'd been talking to this boy looking like an absolute mess. Is that your quirk? Izuku freezes, then quickly he admits, I don't have a quirk, hoping the boy doesn't hear him. You don't? Thankfully, his voice doesn't seem to hold anything toxic, pulling all the tension from Izuku's form. Then what was that? I don't know, he says easily, feeling the soreness in his neck leaving. I was just... I saw the car, and you were in the street. I moved before I could think. I was so... I was just scared, and that moment I wanted you out of the way of the car. The boy nods, looking down with a thoughtful look in his eyes as he considers Izuku's words. I was... I thought I was going to die, he whispers, almost too quietly for Izuku to hear. I heard you shouting. I don't... I don't even remember what you were yelling, the boy admits, his cheeks flushing a soft pink that makes his eye bag stand out. Izuku smiles a bit wider. That's okay. I don't remember what I was shouting either. The boy snorts, poorly hiding it behind a hand. Izuku feels his chest warm at the sight of it, the small smile on his face as he tries to hide his chuckles from Izuku. I thought you were crazy. You, you were crying and just screaming while running at me. He la his laughs grow just a little bit louder. You look like a mess. Hey, Izuku eeps. I was nervous. The boy snickers quietly before letting his voice die out. You, you pushed me out of the way, he says quietly the smile falling from his lips as he makes eye contact with Izuku. You ran at me, and I froze when the car when I saw the car. I was I was so scared. You tackled me, and the next thing I remember is opening my eyes and laying on the road, thinking about how I haven't held anyone like that in a while, but I hugged my sister just this morning. Izuku frowns, shifting to be closer to the eye level on the boy's knees with his Izuku frowns, shifting to be closer to eye level on his knees with the boy. I was scared too, he responds. I didn't, I thought you were going to die. I didn't, I didn't want that to happen. That's all I knew. I was scared you would get hurt or die. You don't even know me. So? The question leaves no room for argument and Izuku can tell it works. If the way the boy's eyebrows raised meaning anything. You were at risk of dying, and you're my age. I couldn't just let you get hit. I should be creeped out that you know my age, but I can't because somehow I know for certainty that you're 12 too. The purplet smiles awkwardly, grabbing the back of his neck. Izuku just smiles back. I think whatever happened went beyond more than just a simple moment, he speculates. I'm... I don't know what happened exactly, but I know it did something. I know you, but I shouldn't. The boy pauses. What's my name? He suddenly asks. Izuku tilts his head with a cocked brow. The fact that he expects to Izuku to know his name despite never having met him is outlandish. And yet, he does. Hitoshi Shinzo. He breathes after a moment, feeling his head pound. He thought the thought was there, in a memory. He can't make out the details, but he can feel it there. He remembers hearing Shinso, Hitoshi, Shin, Toshi, Hito, everything. And yet, he can't grasp a specific memory and hold it in front of him. The knowledge, it's just there, waiting to be utilized. Why does he know all this? He's never met the boy in his life. He just met him because he's almost fucked because he almost fucking died and was lucky enough for Izuku to be nearby to save him. Izuku Midoriya. He twitches, looking up to meet purple eyes of the boy who just spoke in his full name. The confusion and fear mirrors his own. His head hurts. Is he supposed to know what to do here? Because he really doesn't. Alright everyone, that is the end of Echo by You. Thank you so much for listening and I'll continue chapter 2 tomorrow. See you all soon. Bye!